Well, good morning. Uh, I was proud of our team last week. I thought the effort was much better, the concentration level. Uh, we put a, tried to put a real emphasis on the penalties and turnovers and all the things that get you beat, and I thought our guys did a good job handling that in the game. Uh, having said that, it's like I say every week, that one's over with now, so you move on. And uh, getting ready to go up to Charlottesville to play a Virginia team who's got their back up against the wall. Uh, I think they've played a really tough schedule early on. And uh, I know that uh, they've got some quality athletes. The last time that we went to Charlottesville, we were 6-0 and and ranked and went up there and, and got beat 24-21. So we know it'll be uh, – that's, that's now my phone. <laughs> Whenever that happens in the meeting, I take them. <laughs> but uh, so, you know, looking forward to, to going back and having another chance to play again. So we'll open it up for questions. Paul, two pretty good de uh, groups, the Syracuse offensive line and the Syracuse defensive line, pretty stout groups, yet you guys controlled the line of scrimmage. Talk about that and, and, and the strides you've made in, in really dictating up front. Well, I thought that, you know, they'd come in, coming into that game, they had rushed for a lot of yards in the previous two games. And one of our things that we wanted to try to do that we really concentrate on every week is try to limit the other team from running the ball. Uh, I have a strong belief if you, if you look at the stats on Sunday at all the games, uh, a high percentage of teams that, that rush the ball for more yards are the ones that win usually. If a team is limited, now there'll be some exceptions, but most of the time, if you can run the ball and stop the run, you're going to be in pretty good shape. So uh, we did a good job that way defensively. Offensively, we were able to kind of double some of their better players. Uh, you know, 96, the Bromley kid, I think is a really good player. And we, we got to, we doubled him a lot. And I think the linebacker, number 11, got frustrated. He, he wasn't right too many times. He would be, you know, who, on who had the ball. And I think that just wore on him. Uh, uh, the offensive line, you know, did a pretty good job coming off and, and, and doing what we asked them to do. But the, the main thing is, you know, we weren't behind the eight ball all the time. We weren't third and 15, third and 14, third and 12, so we could kind of get into a rhythm. And we probably ran four or five plays, but they all fit off each other. So they all looked the same, and they all, you know, were a little bit different blocking, a little bit different who had the ball. But we were able to do that because we had some continuity and, and we stayed on, on target. We didn't have a lot of long yardage. I know in the first half, uh, I think we only had three first down or three third downs. You know, so we weren't getting to third down a lot, which made it easy to stay on target. Is it proper to say that Vad showed a tremendous amount of patience in what he was doing? It looked like he really did a great job once you got beyond the B back and began to run yeah. the perimeter part of the game, showed a lot of patience. I thought that both quarterbacks did a pretty good job managing what we were asking them to do. They had made a decision by the way they were playing that the quarterback was going to carry the ball most of the time. And, you know, they had the backside safety bearing down on the guy coming in the alley. So a lot of it was one-on-one -on -one with those guys. And what, what Val was able to do was, you know, run for eight, run for ten, run for eight. Uh, he didn't have the long runs other than one maybe down our sideline. But but he made positive plays. It wasn't the negative stuff. You know, only one time in the game did we stop and reverse field. And that's the kind of things that, that we've got to do. Every play's not going to be perfect. You can manage second and seven, second and eight. It's harder to manage second and 15. So stay away from the negative plays. And then when Justin got in, he was able to hit some bigger plays uh, in the run game. But they both did a good job managing, you know, what we asked them to do. Fairly young on defense. I believe they start three freshmen. Uh, what, what do you see from their defensive squad? Well, they're, uh, you know, I think typically uh, they're like any defense that John Tenuta coaches. I mean, they're aggressive. They blitz a lot. Maybe not so much in the last two or three games, but, but they started out uh, blitzing a lot. They're really good on third down, if I'm not mistaken. I think they lead the nation in third down defense. They're only giving up about 24, 25%. Uh, but they have given up a lot of big plays. So it's uh, kind of a deal. Uh, once you start the game, we'll see. Be patient. 
We we usually don't try to target individual guys on defense. Uh, we'll try to run our, our scheme and try to get a numbers advantage or try to get angles or something that we feel like gives us a chance, and that's kind of what we'll do. Last time I tried to target guys on defense were the two freshman corners at Virginia Tech. That didn't work out too well. <laughs> um, you mentioned streamlining things a little bit for uh, for Vad and Justin going into last week's game. Do you so now? Do you take and build back up from that at all, or not? Or does it depend on the defensive situation, like you said, that you're looking at? It depends on what you're playing. But we've you know we've got our package of plays, and we're far enough along now that that. I think they've got a good understanding of it and a good deal. So you just kind of build on it. And, uh, it, you know, we'll go into this game. We'll have some formation packages that we've got four or five plays off each formation. And we just rep the fool out of them in practice. And, and, you know, you might not ever run that formation in a game if they're not giving you what you want or whatever. But we've got enough stuff to uh, that they understand now that I feel pretty good about what we're doing. Paul, you've coached some uh, some really good backs in your career. What makes Kevin Parks uh, the back that he is? Well, I think he's you know like most really good backs, he's got great balance and and he breaks tackles. He's got good speed. I don't know that he's a burner, but he's he's fast enough. And uh, he's got a big offensive line, and he kind of gets lost behind him. He's not a, a tall guy, and uh, explosive, hard to tackle. He's just a good football player. I think he's, you know, he's played against us now for three or four years, and and we got a lot of respect for him. I think he's a good back. Um, Chris Milton now has, has three blocks this year, mm -hmm. and um, I'm curious, can you kind of explain what goes into making him, and, and what makes him such a good? I guess well, player doing, doing that sort of I thing. I think there's certain kids have a certain knack for it. I mean, it's kind of a uh, – some guys are better at it than others. And, and Chris has got good get-off speed. He's got good quicks. Uh, the guy that's really helped Chris a lot and take nothing away from what Chris has done because he's made some great plays is Brandon Watts because Brandon has drawn almost every block that Chris has. Brandon's drawn two blocks. He's in there hitting the thing. Uh, and, uh, you know, we've had – Coach Walkowski's had some good schemes to, to block kicks so that if they get it off a little bit later, uh, Chris has had a chance. Well, we probably – he's probably had another one or two that we could have blocked. Uh, what we got to do is get those things going behind the line and scoop them and score with them. That's what we need to do. We've blocked more punts to not have a touchdown off of it than I can ever remember. So it's a great play, and it changes field position, and, and it's a huge momentum changer. Uh, and I think once you block a kick like Chris has, then it becomes, you know, I want to get another one. I want to get another one. So it becomes kind of a deal. Um, I was talking with Sinjin yesterday, and he was talking about just how he feels more comfortable playing in that position uh, than he did a year ago this time. And, and can you kind of speak to just the progress you've seen him make really since since uh, last, last Well, August. I think that he's kind of, in the last few weeks especially, I think he's kind of embraced the position and his role. He's a, he's a physical guy, and he's turned into a really good blocker. And I think he's embraced that, just like uh, Vad's touchdown down at the weight room when he went in. He was in tail motion, he wheeled around and got a guy. I think he enjoys it now. He likes getting guys down, and he likes uh, getting praise for that, and he sees that as uh, – a positive, and uh, that's good because Sinjin's got ability. I mean, he's he's always been a pretty good athlete, and he's a big guy and strong guy. And you know, it's good for him to get the pitch and score a touchdown because those guys who block a lot, that that was a, that was good for him. And I think he's gaining confidence. But it's like anything; the more you do something, the better you're gonna get at it. I, I don't care what it is, and he's had more time to to rep it and get kind of out of that quarterback mode, so to speak. Paul, how much does that transition to what you did defensively? You put some guys on the field last week. Anthony got on the field, unfortunately got hurt. But you challenged some guys defensively, and some other guys got a chance to play. Now Jabari's going to be back on the field. Does that transition to that situation as well? Yeah, I think that, that we talked a little bit about it, and, and Coach Roof and the defensive staff, we just felt like the, the guys needed to know that 
the performance like at BYU the first half wasn't it? It's not acceptable. I mean, it, it, if you've got responsibilities, you've got to play your responsibility. And, you know, what you don't want is ground beaters and helmet hitters. You know, they don't take the guy they got and then they hit themselves in the head all the time. Uh, just, just take the guy that – take your responsibility and, and play. It's the same thing on offense. And at positions where you have some flexibility that way, where you have some depth, then it's only fair to give other guys a chance. Now, it doesn't mean that, that guys aren't going to win their job back. Or I thought uh, Quayshawn Neely's a great example. Quayshawn got taken off the, uh, you know, the uh, regular team, and he started on nickel. We played a lot of nickel, but he had a great week of practice. And, you know, it's kind of like I think he, he was – not pleased with the way he'd played. And it kind of refocused him rather than no matter what, I'm just a starter and I go out there and there needs to be more urgency than that. You can do it at some positions because you have bodies. Others with injury or whatever, you just kind of, you know, you got to try to get to them some other way because you got nobody to replace them. And then sometimes the guys behind them, if they have a good attitude and practice and keep working hard and fighting and playing, they deserve a chance. You need to, they need a chance to show you what they can do in a game. And Anthony had been – there's a guy who's a pretty good player. He'd been third team forever. And he just he, – rather than pout, you know, he played on all the special teams. He kept coming to practice and working hard and fighting hard. And it's a shame he got hurt because he was really starting to, to you know, come into to, to his own and, and being a good player. Paul, when you're motivating after you go through a losing streak, do you, do you all think about – I mean, championships was the goal, obviously, and, mm -hmm. and maybe can still – who knows how things can play out. But do you all think about bowls and, and bowl streaks and know, look at that and know how many wins you need and to keep that streak going? Oh, I'm sure guys aren't dumb, you know. You, you know, I mean, we, we talked about uh, – after the BYU game, we talked about where we were and that uh, – we gotten ourselves back in a hole where there's not a lot of margin for error, and it's time to bow you back and fight back. And uh, but we don't talk about that like daily for motivation. I mean, we talk about the next game and playing Virginia, and you know, on Monday I talked. There's a huge difference between five and three and four and four. And it's a conference game, and like you said, nobody knows what's going to happen. I mean, we didn't know we were going to be in the conference championship game a year ago and lo and behold there we were so you just keep plugging and keep playing and let that take care of itself one game at a time it'll work itself out